Oil City, Pennsylvania has an historic past as the epicenter of the oil boom of the late 1800s. But something else is tucked away in its history. Back in 1992, it was home to one of the most frightening crimes a family and a community can endure. The brutal kidnapping and murder of an 11-year-old Girl Scout named Shauna Howe. It's a tale that's told and retold to the children in and around Oil City to teach them about the dangers of walking alone in the dark, even when you're close to home. A lot has been published about the case of Shauna Howe, about her murderers, so I don't want to do another one of those videos. But as it turns out, I live just a few miles away from where Shauna was taken. And so rather than telling the detailed story, which you can find all over YouTube, what I'd like to do is take you along as I visit some of the places that Shauna Howe spent her last moments. I hope you'll stick around. Shauna Howe was kidnapped on October 27th, 1992. She was walking home from a Halloween party with her Girl Scouts troop. She was dressed in a gymnastics costume. Uh, tragically, she wasn't supposed to be walking home that night. Her mother had forgotten to pick her up. They got out of Girl Scouts at between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Shauna and Joey L had left together. Nobody was there to pick up Shauna because I forgot. After her mom failed to show up at the end of the party, Shauna decided to walk home with a friend. The walk wasn't far, just five or six blocks. It was dark, 8 p.m. or so. After a couple of blocks, her friend headed toward her own house and Shauna continued on her way. Oil City is pretty different today than it was in 1992. Today it's a sleepy little town filled with people who love its history and want to preserve it. When Shauna Howe made her final journey that night, she felt safe. Oil City in 1992 was a nice, bustling little place. Shauna began her walk down West 1st Street, passing churches, banks, and restaurants. As she crossed Petroleum Street, the neighborhood changes from commercial to residential. So it's darker because there are fewer street lights. And it's more quiet, just the occasional car passing by and the sound of leaves blowing in the breeze. This is the corner of West 1st Street and Reed Street. It was here that a witness, Dan Payden of Oil City, saw a tall, lanky man approach a girl. He then heard a scream. When he turned his attention back toward the sound, both Shauna and her assailant were gone. He ran to a nearby house and used a phone to alert police. Payden told police that he believed he saw a small red car at the corner. It was possible she was pushed into the car. The intersection looks a lot like other intersections in Oil City's residential neighborhoods. There are houses on three corners and a church on the other. The only thing remaining today that gives you any sense of what happened here back on October 27, 1992 is a flat piece of polished granite. Its teardrop shape is a reminder of the tragedy. The inscription reads, Teardrops fall, they're wiped away. This teardrop will forever stay, so no one forgets that awful day. Shauna Melinda Howe was taken away, October 27th, 1992. Within just about an hour of her abduction, Shauna's family, worried that she hadn't arrived home, called police to report her missing. Oil City Police and Pennsylvania State Troopers didn't hesitate. They had already begun looking. What they didn't know is that Shauna had been taken by three assailants to this place, Laurel Avenue, a secluded spot near the end of a dirt road cut into the hillside. 
While it's only about a half mile outside of town, if you don't know where to look, you'll probably miss it. The thick forest, even in the autumn when the leaves are on the ground, hide this spot from view. The house at 43 Laurel Avenue has been raised. In its place, this trailer and a big pile of junk. The house that was once here belonged to Ted Walker, one of Shauna's three assailants. When they arrived at the house on the night of October 27, 1992, his partners, James and Timothy O'Brien, known as Jimmy and Timmy, took Shauna Howe upstairs where they assaulted her. Let's pause for a public service announcement. Parents, don't name your children Jimmy and Timmy. It's stupid, and you're probably creating killers when you do stuff like that. Jimmy and Timmy O'Brien were well known to the police, and these guys were bad news. If you look them up, you'll find a long list of charges and convictions, including sexual assaults. But police ruled them out pretty quickly. It turns out, somebody at the state police, who wasn't all that thorough in his investigation, foreshadowing, determined that Jimmy and Timmy O'Brien were in jail at the time of Shauna's kidnapping, so they couldn't have done it. On October 29th, two days after Shauna's abduction, her gymnastics costume was found by a hiker near this trestle bridge in Rockland, PA, about 10 miles south of where she was taken. Police combed the area and found no other evidence. They did find a semen stain on the costume, and they were able to amplify a DNA profile. The following day, October 30th, another hiker was out in the area and spotted Shauna in the rocks below the same bridge. On the bridge were Shauna's shoes, one facing one direction and the other facing the opposite direction. The killers were taunting police. What a beautiful and peaceful place for something so horrific and violent to have happened. Shauna Howe was tossed off the top of that bridge onto the rocks below. Back in 1992, this was still a rail bridge. Since then, it's been converted to a walking trail. And we're in our rainy season now. So there's a lot more water in the creek than there would have been on Halloween. Well, October 30th, 1992. At this point, the case was going cold. The DNA they had didn't match anyone they tested. Six years passed. Some of the cops retired, and then in 1998, the case was assigned to Rich Graham, who had been a patrolman when Shauna was taken, but by this time was a detective. It turns out Rich lives pretty close to me. He and his wife Betsy, herself a seasoned detective, are still working cases. They're not keen on being on camera, but they are very helpful to me when I ask questions about the case. After years of working the file, following up on leads, consulting with other law enforcement pros, reading and rereading everything in the case file, it occurs to Rich that he'd never actually seen any documentation that Jimmy and Timmy O'Brien were in jail at the time of Shauna's disappearance. So he called a friend with the state troopers and asked him to check. He did, and they weren't. I'm going through this really fast because there's already so much out there about this case, I'm not going to be able to add anything new. So let's just skip to the end. Ted Walker admits that he was the tall, lanky guy who grabbed Shauna. He said it was just going to be a Halloween prank. Yeah, a very funny Halloween prank. If you're an idiot. Walker said that Jimmy and Timmy were the guys who assaulted and murdered Shauna. He agreed to plead guilty to third-degree murder and kidnapping, and to testify against the O'Briens in exchange for a more lenient sentence. Jimmy and Timmy pled not guilty and went to trial. Jurors deliberated for 16 hours before they reached their verdict. Guilty of murder in the second degree, 
murder in the third degree, IDSI forcible compulsion. IDSI stands for involuntary deviant sexual intercourse. Kidnapping to facilitate a felony and criminal conspiracy engaging IDSI victim less than 16 years old. The O'Brien brothers were sentenced to life in prison. Ted Walker was sentenced to 20 to 40 years in prison. So, yeah, his sentence was more lenient. Shauna Melinda Howe is laid to rest in the Heckathorn Cemetery in Cranberry Township, Venango County. It's about eight miles away from where she was taken, and it's a beautiful spot alongside an old white church set out in the country. It's way off the beaten path. One look at her memorial and you can tell that there are still those here in oil heritage country who remember her and come to pay their respects and jog their memories of a young innocent girl whose life was taken too soon by three evil men. Men who didn't see her value. They just saw a plaything that they could use and then throw away. The case of Shauna Howe has had a lasting effect on our community. It's well known that her kidnapping and murder so close to Halloween caused this area to cancel Halloween altogether. And while it has been uncanceled in the years since, Precautions are still taken to make sure that it's a safe holiday for children. Children travel in groups with adults. They only trick or treat in neighborhoods that are deemed to be safe, and they only do it from 6 to 8 p.m. I'm happy to say that our neighborhood is one of the places that children come to to trick or treat. And we do our part to try to make that a special night for them. Shauna would be turning 30 this year and by now she may have even had children of her own. And those children would have grown up in a world where they weren't told the tale of the little girl who was walking alone in a safe neighborhood just two blocks away from her home when she was taken in the dark. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel and if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.